Wisconsin's Player of the Year candidate Sarah Franklin told me, I'm fired up. I love playing in tough, intense environments. It gives me an extra spark, an extra level of motivation to prove all these fans wrong. Paul, this place is popping. It's rocking. I said it would be raucous indeed. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Sarah Franklin's Badgers. They come in with a record of 14 and 4 overall, but they are healthy. And a really interesting name and somebody that you know very well, Holly McPeak. Charlie Furbinger out of Manhattan Beach, California, coming in as a freshman. Big responsibility. Also with the Libero position for Lola Schumacher. So keep an eye on those two young players in this atmosphere. Now for Purdue, 7-2 and two in conference, 16-4 and four overall. Raven Colvin, someone to watch not only offensively, but particularly Holly at the defensive end, the number one blocker in the entire Big Ten Conference. She has been a bright spot, adding so much offense, and she, as in Raven Colvin, is their vocal leader, so look for her to fire up her team today. Best three out of five sets. Ryan McAleer, five foot six freshman out of Overland Park, Kansas. Member of the under-19 national team will go back to serve for Purdue. Two student sections. Two is always better than one. <laughs> Underway. And that ball is served well long. There's going to be nerves on both sides. There's pressure certainly on Purdue to perform against a, in front of another sellout crowd. I'm sure both teams have tons of adrenaline. We're just going to work through that the first few points. Gulje Guchtekin, the five foot five junior out of Istanbul, Turkey, on to serve. She has been the starting Libro for much of her career in Madison. Jacoin, first swing against this big block, just keeps the ball in play. Timing not there on the slide for Wisconsin. Orzel, tight set over the top, and in front of the defense of McAleer, and Wisconsin strikes first in their service phase. Purdue did not get a swing out of that, and Wisconsin takes advantage. Orzel, who wasn't healthy at the beginning of this season, able to find an opening just over the Purdue block. Yeah, Wisconsin lost their first three matches of the year. I mean, look who they played, Louisville, Texas, and Stanford. But they were not healthy at all, and they are probably healthier than they've been all season long, and it showed with their eight-match winning streak. That's her just long. Here is Chloe Chicoin, five-foot-ten sophomore out of nearby Lafayette, Indiana. First team All-Big Ten last year, third team All-American, the number one recruit. Lafayette. We're in West Lafayette. Lafayette's just down. I think we're staying in Lafayette. Overpass and Colvin will take care of it. Service pressure creates opportunities and Chloe Chicoin puts the pressure on Wisconsin right off the bat. Won't go down as an ace, but Chicoin does have 13 service aces so far on the year against 23 errors. Tough serve down the line, working on Orzel. Franklin, first swing out of the backcourt, perfect dig. Eva Hudson off the left side through the Wisconsin block. We talked about the speed of Purdue and the way they can affect a big block. Watch this dig and then the speed with which this set gets to the left pin and the blocker in the middle of the court, late to close because of the quick set to the pin. Taylor Anderson wearing number five in the gold jerseys for Purdue out of San Antonio. Sarah Franklin dropping a dime right on the head of Furbringer. For Purdue, they, that's a missed opportunity. Charlie Furbringer was in the front row and Raven Coleman did not have her hands up defensively. Perfect pass, that sets up the opportunity to throw it down with no block in front. Yeah, good call, Holly, and very surprising for Raven Colvin, one of the best blockers in the business. McAleer, another very good first contact. There is the speed and Hudson, a couple of ricochets down inside the block. Wisconsin has to work on getting to the pin and closing that block. Quick hands over the net or they're going to get used all day long. Raven Colvin, 6'1", senior out of nearby Indianapolis. All Big Ten first team last year. Hitting 404 this year, 1.6 blocks. Phenomenal numbers and way up from last season. Working on Schumacher. That was part of the game plan. Good block touch. Franklin taken out of the play. Right side and hit out of bounds by number 10. That's Devin Robinson. 
I love how Purdue sets up their defense. This tip over the block forces Sarah Franklin to dig the ball, Ooh. taking her out of the transition offense. That was very close. Might have been worth an early challenge. You get two challenges to start each match. If you were correct in your challenge, you keep it. Have an unlimited number. Colvin, pretty tough serve, working on Orzel again. Franklin down the line. McAleer has been very good at the defensive and receiving end so far. Guchikin with the dick. And that ball off the edge and out of bounds. Sarah Franklin, six foot four in her fifth year out of Lake Worth, Florida, the reigning Big Ten and National Player of the Year. And she's one that's healthy. She had an injury a couple of years ago that we'll talk about later, but she broke her ankle this summer in July playing for Team USA, and it was a, a long road back. Good first contact. That ball set a little bit off the net. Eva Hudson off to a very good start. I think that set was off the net on purpose to give Eva Hudson room to swing around the big block. Comes off the net, right? Probably about four feet, but gives her room to swing against that big Wisconsin block. There is the setter, Anderson, averaging just under 11 assists per set. That's third best in the conference. Schumacher tight pass. That ball tapped down and a lucky break that time for the Badgers. It's good to be tall. Carter Booth at six foot seven, the junior out of Denver, Colorado, able to tap that ball to the floor. Here is our first look at the service line. What a pedigree Charlie Furbringer has. Father, a four time All American national champion, star on the beach, Mother Joy, also a national champion, five foot 11 freshman. Coming out of California all the way to Madison, and they're very happy to have her. Hudson, just inside the three-meter line. There is Franklin. Hudson again going off speed, going deep. Orzel all over that. Dug by Chicoy. Very tight set, setting mistake in transition. Definitely, you need to keep that ball off the net, especially with Wisconsin so big. Just give your hitter room to swing. Anna Schmreck out of Canada. Father Mike played in the NBA, won a couple of championships for the Lakers, number 14, six foot nine. Booth, 52, six foot seven. Franklin is the midget at six foot four. Another very, very good pass. Right side to Schmreck, wrist away. Very, very nicely done in front of the Libro. Ali Hornung for Purdue. Anna Schmreck on the right side is hard to stop at six foot nine. Obviously, high contact point, and she's got the range to go cross court, but gets on top of that down the line in front of the defender. Yeah, very good location by Furbringer as well, out to the right pin. And Schmreck was another player that was injured in the very early going, along with uh, Yulia Orzel as well. That's a reception error by Purdue. Wisconsin serving very aggressive and going at the libero of Purdue. Somebody's got to help the setter on that particular play. If you look at the receivers, Chicoin passes 53% good or perfect. Allie Hornung, who is the aforementioned libero at 44%. There is Furbringer. Good pass by Hudson. One outside hitter setting the other. Ava Hudson looking for a touch, none detected. So Wisconsin now on a little bit of a roll. Five-nothing run for Wisconsin. This ball in transition pushed to Eva Hudson on the right side. She tries to thread the needle down the line, but watch this turn just wide. Purdue stuck in this rotation right now. Their setters in right back rotation number one. Lourdes Myers is blocked, so now it's a six-nothing run by the Great Wall of Wisconsin. Carter Booth owning the net, especially in the middle. Purdue needs to move it around to succeed. Time out. And a picture of Dave Shondell. That was very clever. Two student sections, remember, you might, you might see a lot of good stuff. Furbringer on a nice serving run right now. Hudson goes off speed and misses that out of bounds. So Ava Hudson, certainly a target. Every scouting report has Ava Hudson right at the very top of it. 7 nothing run. Hudson now just 3 of 10. And now Ava Hudson sliding to the left side, and they're going to stack left.
Good first contact. That's a key to get it going. And off the top of the tape and out of bounds, another miss. It's for, very uncharacteristic for Hudson. It is, but for Purdue, they got to get somebody else the ball. Take the pressure off Eva so she can find her game. This is what the block of Wisconsin can do to you, particularly at the setting position. Where do you go to get a side out? Nobody Ferber. small wearing red. Ferbiger, exceptional from the service line. Wisconsin looking to make it eight in a row, and they do. Carter Booth hammering out of the middle for the Badgers. I love that transition set by Charlie Furbringer. She looks on the other side of the net, identifies where the blockers are, and sets up Carter Booth for that gap swing right between the two blockers for Purdue. Mentioned that uh, Charlie Furbringer grew up right near you in Manhattan Beach, California. You've known her since she was just a little child. She started playing very early. We talked about her, her volleyball history, if you will, with her mother and father. But why do you think she chose Wisconsin, and what do you think the challenge is for a freshman setter at this level? Charlie Furbringer talked about the mentality here in Wisconsin. Players want to be great. She loved the coaching staff, and she loved the atmosphere that they have to play in in front of Wisconsin and no better conference in the Big Ten. The brain trust of Kelly Sheffield in his 12th year, Dave Shondell, don't think I mentioned it, in his 10th year, Purdue at 16 and four, seven and two. What a match they had at Nebraska. They had a match point, went all the way down to the wire in the fifth set. Nebraska was able to hold on and win that. But it was another loss and one more, much more dramatic for Dave Shondell and his Boilermakers when they lost to Penn State. We'll get back to that in just a moment. That was here in West Lafayette. Let's go back over to Heather Cox. Well, Paul, we've seen Charlie Furbringer serve an 8-0 run here for Wisconsin. Coach Sheffield said that she's the rare freshman who arrived on campus with a college-ready serve. But early in the season, she wasn't as consistent. She wanted to come up with some tricks. So one of them, you may have noticed, is briefly closing her eyes before each serve. She said, I'm just trying to reset my mind and clear it. When I have nothing going through my mind, that's when I'm at my best. She admitted she's also trying to block out the student section, who you might notice is right behind her. During the last match, they were yelling Charlie the Chocolate Factory at her, and today they're heckling her. They actually practiced in serve and pass today, heckling one another so they'd be ready for this tough environment. The Chocolate Factory. That is very mild indeed, but nothing mild about this service run by number Number 24 in red for Wisconsin. Incredible. Charlie Furbringer on fire. Number 24 in red. Also an excellent beach volleyball player. You talked about her father being a professional, but she spent her summers playing beach volleyball and winning lots of tournaments out in California. 19th ace on the season so far for Furbringer. First contact, but it was double, but legal. Sarah Franklin, number 13, hadn't had to do much. Service line and blocking right now for Wisconsin has been incredible. Purdue needs to get locked in. Giving Wisconsin free balls is going to make this a very short match. They need to contact that ball better and serve receive. This is the biggest run I've seen all season long, 11 nothing. And Purdue has been playing. That was no overstatement. They came in winning six out of their last seven, playing their best volleyball. Franklin again. Smartly off the edge of the block, six foot nine. Anna Sprick, everything going the way of the Badgers. When Wisconsin trained this morning, they worked on a lot of transition setting. Kelly Sheffield expected long extended rallies, so other players have to step in when Charlie Furbringer digs the ball. Lola Schumacher does it here for Sprick. Kenna Woolard available, wearing number four in gold, a very capable attacker on the right side. And finally, a service error, but magnificent run for the freshman Furberger. Kelly Sheffield had a very interesting conversation with us about his mercurial freshman setter. He said, sometimes when I talk to Charlie, it's like we're passing each other in the night. But then she starts doing exactly what we talked about come playing time. I think he's very, very happy to have number 24. Julia Kane, 5'11", sophomore out of Windermere, Florida. On to serve and play some defense. Wisconsin with a commanding lead. Eva Hudson goes to the sideline. 
Franklin. And the, ball, the first so far. Number nine, Lourdes Myers getting most of that. Purdue needs to get their block involved, and they do here, knowing this ball's going to Sarah Franklin. Good reception by Orzel. Combination play, and Booth was in the net. So back to back points for Purdue. Volleyball is a game of momentum, and they need those kind of points. Two in a row is a good start for Purdue, who's trying to get their game right. Kelly Sheffield speaking with the second referee. We'll fill you in on that in a moment. Again, you get two challenges, and I think what Wisconsin is contending is that Carter Booth did contact the net, but outside the antenna. That would not be a violation, so this would come under, that would come under the area or auspices of challenging net violation, and the crowd loves it. Yep, we are going to have a challenge. You can challenge net touch, touch off the block, ball up or down, four contacts, couple of foot faults at the service line and three meter line and also a back row attacker see to me Holly this should not be happening you have eight seconds to challenge you don't have 35 seconds to discuss it and we're gonna put the challenge card away so no challenge on that particular play and Kane will continue to serve Orzel good in reception right now and Anna Smrek, one of the reasons why Wisconsin has been so hot, she is hitting for incredible numbers, both in front and behind. Anna Smrek is versatile for Wisconsin. At six foot nine, how do you stop her one on one in the middle? You don't. 77% in front, 66% behind. Jacoin, blocked by Booth. We talked about the great wall of Wisconsin already with three scoring blocks, Holly McBee. Big time impact, and we knew that Wisconsin was going to be strong defensively at the net. That particular block, Anna Smrek at 6'9", Carter Booth at 6'7". Purdue in all kinds of first ball contact problems. Good hustle by Wisconsin, and this is going to be a break for Purdue. Eva Hudson of Purdue talking to her team, saying, let's get some momentum going on our side. We need to make the effort. Very uncharacteristic for Eva Hudson with all of these hitting errors. Four or five matches against top-ranked opponents. She's only She's gone through no errors in the opening set, mind you. That's an unforced error against Wisconsin. Allie Hornig wearing number 10 in gold and now in the black Libro jersey, excuse me, 5'10 senior out of nearby New Albany, Indiana, following in the footsteps of her sister at the Libro position. Chacon. And a smack. No approach, but still six foot nine and very athletic and healthy. I like the way Wisconsin is moving as a team, especially in transition. Players not afraid to step in and set that ball because Charlie Furbringer was on her knees going for that dig. CeCe Crawford on now replacing Carter Booth. Kelly Sheffield explained how he's going to use two middles across the front row as they get specialized. Service missed that time by Sage Damro out of Howard's Grove, Wisconsin, coming in as a defensive specialist. Ryan McAleer will go back to the line. She got Purdue off to a pretty darn good spot, particularly in defense and first ball contact. 19-12, it has been all Wisconsin in this opening set. Right side to Schmreck, and that's into the antenna and out of bounds. Purdue just trying to build one point at a time. Momentum so important. Good pass for Wisconsin. They go to Anna Smrek. She tries to go down the line and hits part of the antenna. Net violation. Ball hit out of bounds. A little bit of a sketchy portion here for Wisconsin. <laughs> Nothing sketchy about that. Anna Smrek over the top. And we expect this. Purdue used to playing defense behind the shorter blocker for Purdue and Chloe Chacoin. But that one straight down. Oh, that is, that is indefensible. Guchtekin on to serve. Yeah. 
McAleer again, good first contact. Colvin, that ball did not clear, so that's going to be down on Purdue's side. And the struggles continue, particularly at the offensive end. Purdue hitting negative, which means they have more hitting errors than they have kills. Purdue has not been able to score out of the middle. And then they're too pin heavy, and then they're predictable for this gigantic Wisconsin block. Purdue on the season is fourth best in the Big Ten Conference in hitting efficiency at over 280. Right back to Colvin. I love this decision by Taylor Anderson to go right back to Raven Colvin. She is so important to Purdue's offense and a dangerous offensive player for Purdue if they can get her going. Hitting 404 so far on the season. Here is Chicoin. Tough serve. Out of the back row. Good block touch out of the middle by Colvin. Orzel McAleer is there again. And it's going to be a net violation. That's called against Devin Robinson, wearing number 10 in red. Purdue trying to be patient and work one point at a time. You see in the middle of the court, Devin Robinson follows through with her left hand. Easy point for Purdue. Still a six-point advantage. Really good reception that time by Franklin. Right on target. Where do you go if you're Anderson? Eva Hudson still struggling. Colvin with a tip. Playing some really good defense is Wisconsin. And better blocking, saving block to keep that play alive for Purdue. Charlie Furbringer. Watch her in transition, going to that pin. And then option on two misses the Purdue. It's really hard to hear a magnificent, magnificent atmosphere for Eva Hudson and the Purdue Boilermakers. 14,876. And what a do job Dave Shondell has done building this program and continuing the legacy of his father, who is basically the patriarch of volleyball in the state of Indiana. 21-16. Still comfortable lead for Wisconsin. Perfect pass. What a delivery that time by Furbringer. Perfect pass, and you see Carter Booth going high and flat off the hands of Purdue's block. Wisconsin also well below their season average. They lead the conference in hitting efficiency. They're at 188, but Purdue just cannot get things going. We talked about the block of Wisconsin, and it has been that as well as the weapons. Yulia Orzel out of Poland. She was part of that national championship team in 2021. And last year, Yulia Orzel was the libero for this Wisconsin team. But she's got a hitter's mentality. She's back in that left side position, hitting out of the back row with power. First missed reception for McAleer. Pretty good set to Hudson. and able to tap that ball down inside. Eva Hudson will figure it out and get things going. In the meantime, for Purdue, they've got to get things going with some other offensive support. Only one block in front of Eva Hudson. She's able to work inside and get on top of that for Purdue. Well, and if you're Purdue, you've trailed by as many as eight. You want to you want to get some rhythm and get some momentum and make Wisconsin stay out there for as long as possible. And that certainly won't help. I mean, for as long as possible in the opening set. Colvin going for it from the service line and missed that long. So it'll be set point number one. Dave Shondell looking to make some adjustments going into the second set. Set point number one is mentioned 24-17. And here is Lola Schumacher. 27 digs for the freshman out of Carmel, Indiana against Baylor. Right side, Lourdes Myers high off the block. I talked about Eva Hudson getting some offensive support from her teammates. In the middles are both so dynamic. Lourdes Myers, one on one, goes off of Franklin too deep to retrieve. Here is Taylor Anderson, part of the uh, Big Ten all freshman team last season. Schumacher, perfect pass. 
Hudson off the edge of the block again. Purdue finding their way one point at a time, trying to get the momentum going. Look at the dig here, and then left side pin, Eva Hudson going off the right side blocker of Wisconsin. Perfect pass. That ball was set too tight. That's a setting mistake by Furlinger. And Eva Hudson, with some help from Myers, stuffed that ball. Wisconsin trying to run a slide to Carter Booth. The ball's too tight, and Eva Hudson, left hand on the ball, shuts it down. Third set point. And Raven Colvin before, and now this ball is served out of bounds. Purdue made a bit of a move towards the end of that set. The start of the second will be very, very important for both of these teams here in West Lafayette. Number 10, Purdue looking to pull off the upset against the visitors, the Wisconsin Badgers coming in. Winners of eight in a row. Yeah. This house party is crazy. My crew is hella waving. Yo, flip the cup, then say what's up, then slide out. Have a one set to none lead over Purdue. And it's amazing to watch this season. Wisconsin Sarah Franklin is having the reigning player of the year just out here dominating. And it wasn't that long ago that Franklin didn't know if she'd ever be able to play the sport she loves again. In the summer of 23, days before the team was leaving for a European tour, Franklin began having severe pain in her forearms and her hands were turning purple. She was immediately admitted to the hospital where Franklin was told there was a likely chance she would never play again. She told us she had to lay in a hospital bed with that news until surgery 48 hours later when an angiogram revealed it was quadrilateral space syndrome, a condition that could be surgically repaired and that she would be able to play again. So Franklin wore surgical scars underneath those arm sleeves back in the gym that fall with what she calls a renewed gratitude for the sport, saying I've never been so grateful to be sore, to grind in the gym with my teammates and do what I love. Paul? When we talked to Sarah Franklin this week, she had so much gratitude to be back out on the court. Gave her such a different perspective. And I'll tell you, coaches across the country are saying Sarah Franklin is one of the very best six rotation outsides in the country. One of the best passers and can hit from everywhere on the court and score. Yeah, credit to her institution and to the game. And, and what a recovery. And thank you for for that, Heather. Hit 303, taking a lot of very tough swings. Third in the conference night now at 4.5 kills per set. Let's take us over to the Purdue side. Charlie Ferbringer went on an incredible run from the service line. Wisconsin led 16 to 6 and really never looked back. What do you what do you want to see from Dave Shondell's Boilermakers? Purdue's passing was very good in the first set and obviously Charlie Furbringer is a very good serve but that's the first thing that you need to build on good passing team split their two meetings last year each winning on their home floor here it was a very dramatic five set win off speed touched by Spreck here's Orzel off speed right back to you Hudson up into the block covered by McAuliffe Wonderful play into the middle. Quick play and off the floor by C.C. Crawford. Wisconsin's defense forcing a down ball and then C.C. Crawford, the gap set or three set, successful versus two Purdue blockers. Crawford, six foot three, graduate out of Lansing, Kansas. Raven Coleman has got a rocket of a right arm. Raven Coleman is the vocal, emotional leader of this Purdue team. If you're Purdue, you want to get her going. Every time they have a good pass, run those middles, and it will really take some pressure off the pin hitters. Dave Shondell told us an interesting story about the emerging leadership of number seven in gold. Finish that thought after this point. Tough serve. Here to Spreck. And going over the top of the block and down. But to finish the thought on Raven 
Colvin, whose father was a two-time Super Bowl champion, Rosie, and a star here defensive end for the Boilermakers. But Dave Shondell said, look, after a match, win or lose, I usually speak for just a couple of minutes. He did his piece, and then Raven Colvin stepped in and said, wait a minute. I've got more to talk about. He's, she stepped up, talked to all of the players about where they needed to improve and work harder. It was actually Tuesday this week after practice. They did not have a great practice, and she told everybody and called players out, but the team respects her, and they respond to that. CC Crawford now with 605 total blocks. That's the second most among active Division I NCAA athletes. She's wearing number nine in red. If you're just joining us, Wisconsin ranked number eight, Purdue number 10. Wisconsin won the first set easily after they went out to a big lead. Right side, Myers with a kill as well. Why is the slide so effective for both of these teams? It's such a dynamic offensive play. You can go off one foot, jump a little bit higher, and you create space because it's quick and that middle blocker can't get out there to close. That's a pretty good matchup, the 6-3 Myers working on the smaller Orzel. Anderson, good float serve, handled overhand. Beautiful swing, offensive set by Furbringer into Franklin out of the middle. Serving for the Panthers, walking to Union Orchard. Orgel for Wisconsin. Better first ball contact. Hudson is rejected. Robinson out of the middle, number 10. Charlie Furbringer, number 24, sets up the block on the right side, and Devin Robinson closing. Again, able to slow Eva Hudson. The big gun for Purdue. And pretty good move by number 24, Furbringer, as well, setting that block. Coming out to Hudson again, a little more air under that one. Dug by Schumacher, saved that time by Furbringer. Good set in transition. <laughs> She's had a rough start today, but great players like Eva Hudson find a way. What a save by Charlie Furbringer. And then this ball a little bit inside. Hudson crushes it inside the block. Seventh kill on 22 swings for Hudson. Left side, Franklin going off speed. Good read by Chicoy. Very nice tip. Beautiful recognition by Kenna Wood. Kenna Woolard on the right side for Purdue. We always talk about the left side, but she's a really important part of this offense. They need points from her position. 6-1 sophomore out of Dunlop, Illinois. Played 21 matches last year for the Boilermakers. Hudson again, out to Franklin. Dug by Hornig. Franklin again. Chacoin through the block, Orzel, beautiful center field defense. Both teams working hard, and finally the closing kill by Purdue. Eva Hudson lighting things up. This is an opportunity out of the back row, off the tip. She makes herself available in the middle of the court, one on one. Beautiful kill out of the back row for Purdue. And how about that setting selection going to Hudson in that situation? Good block touch. Uh, Purdue's got to make that play. You cannot give a team like Wisconsin or Pitt or Nebraska or Louisville or Creighton. You can't give them free points. It's loud in here, and if the setter was yelling help, nobody could hear her. <laughs> Damro again on to serve for the Badgers. Lost only one match so far in the Big Ten season. That was to Minnesota on opening night. Franklin looking for some hands and missed it out of bounds. Sarah Franklin trying to go for that deep corner. Hornick to serve. Anna Smrek is leading the way offensively with six kills. Franklin, like the other outsides for Purdue, is struggling as well to her standard. Three of 15 with two errors. 
Remember earlier today, Dave Shondell told us when he was very gracious with his time, wanted to serve short. What does that tactic try to accomplish? A short serve can really disrupt offensive rounds. It can take a player out of the offense. Like if you serve Sarah Franklin and she has to chase the ball, it's hard to get back out and make an approach. It can also disrupt some offensive patterns that middle blockers want to run. Remember the run for Ferbringer in the opening set. Purdue needs to get out of this rotation. Good transition set. Chacoin is blocked. That's what nightmares are made of. Spreck and Booth lined up in front of you. My goodness, pretty good set. Chloe Chacoin is up there challenging it, but there is no gap between those two blockers for Wisconsin. Well, Anna Schmreck, a full one foot taller and very talented than Chacoin, trying to put that ball away. Out of the back row again, good read by Schmreck. Orzo. Schmreck again, through the block and down. A lot of weapons and a lot of size, as we talked about, for the 14 and 4 Wisconsin Badgers, the 2021 national champions, and four out of the last five years to the national semifinals. They were eliminated by the eventual champions from Texas last season. Furbringer will serve for the 16th time here in a set and not even a half. That means she scored 15 points from the service line, or her team has when she's serving. Good pass by Hudson. Nice play once again in combination, getting Eva Hudson, number 17, very, very involved. It's got to be a team effort for Purdue, but Eva Hudson has to pick up her numbers, get the middles involved, and Kenna Woolard get her some kills on that right side as well. At 26 kills in the five-set loss at Nebraska. Jacoin had 22, good block touch. Chance in transition, quickly out of the middle, Orzel. That ball set too tight. Coming to Franklin, tough chance, another miss set. And Taylor Anderson cleaning things up for Purdue. Taylor Anderson is one of the best blocking setters in the Big Ten. She's physical, takes care of that tight ball. This is too tight in transition for Wisconsin. Sarah Franklin can't get there in time, and Anderson takes advantage of it. Perfect point about number five in gold. Averages almost one block per set, which is kind of unheard of as, an outs, as a wing blocker, but particularly at the setting position for Dave Shondell. Two-time Big Ten Coach of the Year, Wisconsin. Kelly Sheffield, three-time Big Ten Coach of the Year. Here's Franklin. And both teams exchange service errors. In this rotation, watch Purdue go at Sarah Franklin, possibly short cross court into traffic. We've been talking an awful lot about Eva Hudson, Chloe Chacoin as well, facing the pressure of this block. I'll give you her numbers in a second. They're not good. Perfect contact by Franklin. Smrek unloading one on one. Charlie Furbring, her favorite part of setting is getting her hitters one-on-one. -on -one. And she jump sets this ball. Looks like she's going middle. Raven Coleman, the middle blocker, stepped right. And then Anna Smack with one block in front of her. Not going to win that one. Finishing the thought on Chacoin, wearing number two in gold. One of ten with two errors. Coleman is stopped. Orzel with a stuff. Wisconsin having another block party. So dialed in defensively, the way they're working together as blockers, and you see no gap there between the two. Seven blocks for Orzel in Wisconsin, only two right now for Purdue. Remember, they had 21 in four sets against Michigan. Crawford back to Smrek. Indefensible. I mean, incredible high contact point in you just got to be ready to dig down that line over the block because she's literally snapping that ball too high to block. As a freshman in 2021, she was the most outstanding player of the national championship. Wisconsin defeated Nebraska. Jacoin out of the back rope. Beautiful dig by Schumacher. 
Red by Furbringer. Schmreck again. Schmreck right side. And that ball will fall on the Wisconsin side. A break for Purdue. Wisconsin, which is swarming defensively, but Purdue able to win that point and really trying to keep this close in the second set. 88th meeting all time between these two very, very solid programs. Wisconsin leading the way with 52 wins. Again, they split the two meetings last year. Here's Orzel. Good high swing, recycle the point. Tough chance for Hudson. Hudson again. Franklin out of the back row. Oh, tight set. Ball's knocked down. The crowd is. 14,870. Well, I guess there must be some Wisconsin fans in here, but they knew the ball was down. Ten kills for Eva Hudson, working her way back into yep. this match for Purdue. Ten kills on 32 swings. Here is Colvin. Tough serve, handled by Orzel. And Crawford, beautifully done by number 99. I'm very impressed with Furbringer. CC Crawford, quick attack, it's on top of that, but it starts with a good pass. Orgel overhand dig right in her setter's hands, and I'll tell you, if you're Purdue and you're late over the net, you're going to pay. You have to have hands up and pressed to stop those quick swings. 15-11 is the lead. Wulje Guchikin out of Turkey on to serve. That ball just out of bounds. Wisconsin only, I should say, hitting 190, but they're holding Purdue to 115. And that's one of the things that's really, really gotten better for Sarah Franklin and Wisconsin. Their numbers in terms of where they're holding opponents now that they're getting healthy are among the nation's best. Way up from early in the season. There is Anderson. Schumacher's been solid in reception. Orzo with a throw down and is blocked by Myers, along with some help on the outside from Wooler. Kenna Wooler at that time really disciplined with her block because Orzel tries to throw it down, so it's important to have those hands pressed. Nowhere for Wooler to go. Four blocks now for Myers and Purdue. And the Boilermakers back within two after dropping the opening set 25-20. Boy, Franklin is really good in reception. That ball missed out of bounds by Robinson. Devin Robinson's one of the best slide hitters in the country, but this is that ball long for Wisconsin. That ball is hit long, and here comes Purdue taking advantage of some unforced airs. Wisconsin and Purdue. The Denver Nuggets, a pretty good choice of Nikola Jokic some years ago. Here is Orzel. A chance for the tie. Ball a little tight. Orzel tries to push, and she does shove that ball down inside the Purdue block. Let's go back to Heather Cox. Paul, it's incredible that six players on the court today have parents that were professional athletes. Six foot nine, Anna Schmeck's dad, Michael, played six years in the NBA, including two national championships with the Lakers. You talked about Charlie Furbringer's dad playing Pro Beach for the AVP. You just talked about Carter Bruce's dad. She wears number 52 to honor him. Now for the Boilermakers, Rachel Williams' dad, Calvin, was a right receiver for seven years in the NFL with the Eagles and the Ravens. And Raven Cook's dad, Roosevelt, of course, played linebacker here at Purdue, then in the NFL, two-time Super Bowl champion with the Patriots. Talk about it being all in the genes for these players. Wow, that, thank you, Heather. That is a long and distinguished list. And Raven's brother plays on Matt Painter's basketball team here at Purdue. Off-speed, Schumacher scrambling. Ball off the edge, better block. Anna Schmreck, yes, she's long, and she's very strong and six foot nine, but really technically good with her hands, right, Holly? She is. That time it was Sarah Franklin on the left pin block, but Anna Schmreck at 6'9 moves really well.
Franklin there as well. You look at the totals, eight blocks now for Wisconsin. And a timeout is called by Purdue. Wisconsin leading at 18-14. Yeah, it was Franklin. Kenna Willard trying to tool that block, but Sarah Franklin more disciplined with her left hand. Boy, you better be absolutely precise with your transition setting if you're playing Wisconsin the rest of the way. Now that Franklin is healthy, Orzel is healthy, along with the others, and most particularly as well, Anna Spreck. Heather Cox talked about the impingement in her arm and, and the, the danger that it was to Sarah Franklin that she might never be able to play again. But then she suffered a broken ankle this past summer representing the United States over in the Dominican Republic and had to work a long way back. Not only broke her ankle, fractured her ankle, I should say, but also when we talked to her earlier in the week, suffered a, a lot of damage to her ligaments as well. So good for Franklin to work her way back. Freshman Charlie Furbringer seated next to Sarah Franklin. She's doing an incredible job running this offense. It's nice that she has all these weapons, but she's making good decisions on where to put her hitters. Two things are happening. Wisconsin and Charlie Furbringer are getting a lot more comfortable together. But since the opening match loss, that was at Minnesota. Ain't no record, only dropped two sets. And look at what they're doing offensively and most impressively at the defensive end. Wisconsin known for their blocking. They hold their opponents to a low number, but 361 as a team is an incredible offensive number. And I give a lot of credit to Charlie Furbringer, the setter running their offense. Number one in the Big Ten in terms of hitting efficiency, number six nationally. And here is Orzel back to serve. Three members of this Wisconsin team are national champions from 2021. Horning with a tight pass, and that's gonna be a back row attacker. That was a tough situation for Anderson. Taylor Anderson was in the back row. She cannot jump up and hit that over the net. She's got to bring it back to her side of the court. Four nothing run for Wisconsin. 19-14 is the advantage. Smreck with nine kills on 16. Franklin only three kills on 17. Timing not quite there, but getting that ball to the floor off the bench. Timing was off for Wisconsin block and just a throw down in the middle for Purdue. Lizzie Carr, redshirt sophomore middle blocker, six foot six out of Westchester, Pennsylvania, coming on. There is Julia Carr. Okay. Wisconsin leads one set to none. They took the opening set. They went out to a 16 to 6 lead and never looked back. Schumacher has been solid in reception. And Sarah Franklin. Sarah Franklin. Sarah Franklin is a special kind of hitter for Wisconsin. Lola Schumacher passed this ball pretty far left. Everybody in the gym knew it was going to Sarah Franklin. And she still elevates and hits this ball with range inside the block and the defense. Working on Hudson. Raven. Over the top of the block and just missed out of bounds by Franklin. Unusual unforced errors by number 13 in red. Wisconsin is defending the ball well enough. I'd love to see them run their middles more in transition. Purdue only siding out at 42% so far for the match. That is not a good number. But give the defense of Carter Booth and Wisconsin, a lot of credit, number 52 with the kill. Carter Booth uses her long arms to hit that one sharp cross body. This is a slide attack going off one foot and you can see the middle blocker for Purdue, tons of room between she and her left side blocker. There is Furbringer, been a real weapon from the service line, five point lead for Wisconsin. Blocked again, Carter Booth along with Spreck and Franklin. Wisconsin is bunching in to slow down the middle attack of Purdue and it's paying off. Those are some big hands up in the way of Raven Colvin who can be an offensive weapon for Purdue if they can find space to kill the ball. Double figure blocks now for Wisconsin. The great wall of Wisconsin. Here's Chacoin having a tough afternoon. Right side to Spreck. 
just out of bounds. Smart shot, but just ran out of real estate. Charlie Furbringer going all day long to her hot hitter, Anna Spreck, but that one just misses long. Orgel rotating to the line to dig that ball. Yeah, that ball clearly out. Smreck now 9 of 17. That was her third inning error, hitting over 350. That ball missed out of bounds. Wisconsin is saying that there was a, a touch, but the second referee and first confer and no touch detected. Kelly Sheffield sprinted over to grab that card. So we will have our first. We had some dis Sarah Franklin. Franklin now five kills on 20 swings, four errors. Not a typical afternoon for the reigning player of the year, but Wisconsin is winning this match fairly comfortably so far. Chicoy, really good swing. Chloe Chicoy at five foot 10 has to be creative with her offense. She's got Anna Smreck and Carter Booth in front of her and she goes flat high hands for setter Taylor Anderson, giving her room to find those hands. When we talked to Chloe earlier in the week, she said 5'10", uh, maybe not. Booth, dug by Hornig. Purdue trying to get it started, looking for a touch. Very good swing by Hudson. Eva Hudson again going flat off the hands of the Wisconsin block. If they're going to be big and up there, you got to use them in your favor. Hudson has sorted it out. 11 kills now and 34 swings after a very poor start. There's Chacoin. Franklin ripping out of the back row. That time, Charlie Furbringer basically had four options, three hitters in the front row and Sarah Franklin out of the back row. Talk about stress on the defense on the other side of the net. Well, when you were on the Telestrator, you were talking about exactly that kind of opportunity. We saw it again. Here's Schumacher, set point number one. Good read by Furbringer. Spreck for the set win. Hudson, and not down yet. Great play by Schumacher. Hudson again, speed to the outside, and right inside. And that's the speed of the offense to the pins that we need to see more of for Purdue because Wisconsin. Excellent pass by Franklin. Gotta go, Hudson again. Yeah.
sold out against Indiana here at Mackey Arena, 14,876. Exact. Couldn't they have squeezed in one more and set another record? Fire Marshal probably wouldn't let them. <laughs> Back with three-time Olympian and NCAA champion Holly McPeak. Heather Cox on the sideline. I'm Paul Sunderland. Thanks so much for joining us. A couple of weeks' time, we'll be in Madison, Wisconsin for, I don't know if they'll still be number eight if they keep playing this way, but they'll be taking on currently number three, Penn State. That should be another outstanding match coming out of the Big Ten. Big match last night that you had some interest in. Pitt taking down Louisville in five sets. Yes, those are two teams playing really high-level volleyball, but I'll tell you, I think we're going to see Wisconsin climb the ranks and try and get in that top four so they can host through to the national semifinals. It, it, does it look like to you that Pitt and Nebraska have separated themselves a bit? I, I would think so. I, for me, Pitt and Nebraska are one and two. And, and then after that, I feel like it's anybody's game. Louisville played Pitt extremely well, but Wisconsin, to me, looks like they're moving into that spot. And Penn State, a very nice comeback win against UCLA on Thursday night. Three kills, three errors since then. As you might imagine, the All-America Even Hudson is doing work against Wisconsin. Set point number four. Perfect pass. What a block. Myers out of the middle. Purdue needs stops like that, and Lourdes Myers shutting down that quick attack in the middle for Wisconsin. Really important to get those stops, especially at the net. Oh, by the way, it's 24-23. Set point number five. Colvin has been superb at the line. Must serve in. Orzel one on one. And outside the antenna. A really good run towards the very end of set number two. Purdue put a lot of pressure, Holly, on Wisconsin. But once again, the eighth rank lane and Purdue are trailing two sets to none. Underway in the third. Tight pass, and that's going to be a back row attacker violation. You talked about it earlier, Furbringer above the plane of the net and in the back row. Charlie Furbringer tried to go up and save that ball, but coming over the net, and Eva Hudson was smart to stay out of that, so it's a Purdue ball. Coach Shondell was saying any serve to Sarah Franklin is a mistake, and Orzel there cuts in front. And Anna Smrek leading the way offensively for both of these teams. Now the first attacker in double figures with 10 kills. But fortunately for Purdue, she's only in that one rotation, and then she joins the bench. It's an interesting point, Holly. You think they'd start Smrek in left front and give her the beginning of the set, uh, multiple opportunities. There is Kuchtikin. Short serve. Tough serve. Diving save by Hornig. And then smartly off the edge by Orzel. Eula Orzel, five kills today, just being effective. We've seen her hit out of the back row, doing a really nice job in serve receive as well. McAleer right on target, ball tipped to the floor away from Schumacher. <laughs> Good things happen when you pass the ball. Obviously, obviously it opens the, op the opportunity for the setter to call her own number. No Wisconsin blocker standing in front of her, and she just throws it down. And Raven Colvin, who was outstanding from the service line at the end of that second set, will get her first look here in the third. Oh, that was, that was flat and clean and just caught the top of the tape. Service story so far. Wisconsin has three aces and five errors. Purdue, no aces and seven errors. Here is Orzel. Hudson going off speed and rejected. 11 blocks. Devin Robinson getting the job done out of the middle. I like the idea. She wanted to go off speed to the middle of the court, but you've got Devin Robinson. You've got to go a little bit higher to clear that block. Hudson wanted the ball high, and Lourdes Myers, number nine, threw the block and down. Taylor Anderson.
Anderson, beautiful feed to Lourdes Myers, number nine in gold. And I talked about it earlier. It's got to be a team effort to stress Wisconsin and be able to score. Using the middles is a big part of that. Lizzie Carr coming on wearing number 15 at six foot five. A little more size up front for Purdue. Orzel, expert pass. Here's Franklin. Hudson calling for it. Good recycle by Franklin. Back to her by Furbringer. One on one. Sarah Franklin, the ABCA player of the year last year shows you why. She recycles this ball, gets back outside and one on one, even though she's got a 6-5 blocker in front of her, she's able to crush that ball. That reminds me of a very interesting conversation we had with Kelly Sheffield about his freshman setter. We'll get to that in a second. Right side, Myers again. Good transition set to Franklin. And Carter Booth, just like her father, a two-handed slam dink. But back to the conversation between Coach Sheffield and Charlie Furbringer. Coach Sheffield asked Charlie, what's your number one objective as a setter? To get my hitters one-on-one. -on -one. And he said, well, you know, we've got Anna, and we've got, how about just a really good set to one of our really big and talented hitters? She's very creative. Hudson, off the block and out of bounds. <laughs> Kelly Sheffield also talked about some of the other setters he's had in his program. Sydney Hilly, Lauren Carlini, both incredible All-American setters, and how their attitude and approach to the game is so different from Charlie's. Lauren Carlini, a special assistant now on the sideline at Wisconsin. Out of the back row. Schumacher flying around. Good play defensively, and what a rip at Ball's Doug. Caught the scoreboard and went to Wisconsin's side, so that is immediately ruled out of play. If it touches the scoreboard and stays on your side, you can continue to play. There is Lauren Carlini. Her title is Offensive Analyst and Strategy Consultant. Had a very, very nice visit earlier today at Serve and Pass with the Olympic silver medalist. Wisconsin still all, oh, look out, all over Chapoy. Wisconsin picks up this ball, goes back to Smrek, and wow, the power, the sound of this ball, even though it's loud in here, I could hear it and feel it. Wisconsin looks like, oh, look, the quality of opponent they played the first three matches out as we talked about. A serve for who else but Charlie Furberger with the big Wisconsin. That's a number people are going to remember. It's the second highest total all season long. The other Marquette at Wisconsin. That was 1584. That was at the Kohl Center in Madison. Errant pass. Chacoin. Big swing down the line for two and goal. Prior to this match, you and I talked about how important the outside hitter duo of Hudson and Chacoin was good, were going to be for this Purdue team, and it's been a quiet day for Chloe there, but finding a way on that left side going down the line. 15 kills now for Hudson, only three for Chacoin. Nice block out of the middle by Colvin. Dug by Anderson. What a sm oh, very smart shot, but just a little too strong. Love the idea. She saw the opening in that corner and just pushed it too long. What a cover play by Smrek just to stick her arm up and keep it alive. Wisconsin finding their offense here in the third set. Hitting 385. There's Colvin. A good response out of the middle. Taylor Anderson running a back one to Raven Colvin just to create some space. Make that big middle blocker move. She didn't just have to go straight up. She had to take a step. And Colvin able to beat her with her speed. The lead is four. Here's McAleer. Short serve has not been very difficult for Wisconsin to handle, at least so far. Oh, big block. Smrek again working on Chicoin. 
go quickly to Heather Cox. Paul, so far out of that timeout, Purdue doing what his, their coach, Shondell, asked. He said, without first contact, we can't run our game plan. We can't run the ball to the middle. You've got to get first contact with a good pass. Right now, guys, 58 swings for Purdue's outside hitters compared to just 19 for their middle blockers. That last to receive, they finally ran the middle, but Coach Shondell wants to see a lot more attacking in the middle part of the court. When they run their middles, it opens things up. It keeps the block off balance, and Purdue needs that, especially against the big block of Wisconsin. You need them uncomfortable. Some discussion here between Kelly Sheffield and a couple of his Wisconsin Badgers. Going back to serve, ready to get things going once again here in West Lafayette. Sage Damro wearing number three in red back to serve. Carter Booth was walking back like she needed to serve. There was a substitution issue. Kelly Sheffield talking to his assistant coach, trying to figure out. Well, it can be an accounting error. I make 15 subs for each team, so players are going in and out all the time. But it's too early to oh, be a 15. Oh, of course. Yes, of course. This is just a, a mistake at the scorer's table. Heather's uh, efforting to find out what's going on. But just to recap, Wisconsin up two sets to none, 25-20 in the first. Charlie Ferbringer was fantastic from the service line. And then 25-23 in the second. And Wisconsin's going to take a timeout, check their lineup. Third set, must-win situation for Purdue, but it's been all Wisconsin so far on the road. Carter Booth will serve and play some defense for Wisconsin. Tough serve. Ace for Carter Booth. Incredible. Just letting it fly. High contact point. Lots of pace. Wow. The first Badger to register an ace that's not named Furbringer. That is the fifth ace overall for Wisconsin. And that ball carries just long. All right, take us back over to Purdue. Coach Shondell, of course, had always come back to first contact. But what do they have to do? How do they get to Chicoin going? I mean, giving her room, obviously, but the first contact running the middle should free things up on the pin. But right now, they've got to serve Wisconsin and, and possibly the short middle. I'd love to see Anna Smrek be taken out of the offense by having to pass the ball. Yeah, once again, Dave Shondell in his 22nd year as head coach at Purdue told us at serve and pass this morning he wanted to short serve. And uh, a lot of his players were out there really practicing that short little drop serve to that area, just as you described. There's Chicoin, her offensive numbers, three of 18, four errors. Tough serve, good save by Orzel. What a dig by Chicoin. Hudson chopping down the line. Eva Hudson has been cuffing it down the line. And Charlie Furbringer, the right back defender, kind of sneaking up in transition. But what a dig by Chicoin. And then you see the cuff down the line. Eva Hudson is Eva Hudson again after a slow start. Three kills, three errors to start things out. Very easy serve and a very smooth side out by Wisconsin. Easy serve and Charlie Furbringer having a field day isolating her left hitter, Orzel, one on one. And Sarah Franklin wearing number 13, Orzel with the kill, but Sarah Franklin 61%. Good or perfect pass. That is a fantastic number. Colvin going behind, Furbringer there with a second contact. Orzel is blocked. Taylor Anderson by herself on that block, solo block. We talked about her being one of the best blocking centers in the Big Ten, and that time scores a big point for Purdue. 13 to nine is the advantage. Two sets to none lead for Wisconsin. Looking to make it nine wins in a row after the opening night loss at Minnesota. 
That ball out of bounds. Raven Coleman puts a ton of pace on that ball, which can be disruptive to pass, but missing that one wide. Chicoin available out of the back row. Myers up front along with Anderson and Eva Hudson. Right side to Myers. Con connection not there. Wisconsin defense is. Back to Myers again. If you don't first succeed, do it again. And then Purdue, the second swing pays off. How about Devin Robinson laying her body down, getting it over the net? Incredible defensive effort. Then one on one, Purdue able to score. Yeah, we've seen Wisconsin obviously impose their will in the blocking phase, but they're getting on the floor, as is Purdue. Franklin. Right side, Robinson, two defenders there, and the ball goes down in between. Robinson attacking that corner, and the middle back and right back defender for Purdue hesitate, and that ball goes down. Devin Robinson, I talked about her earlier, one of the best slide hitters in the country. So many weapons on the side of Kelly Sheffield in Wisconsin. Average pass at best, Hudson. Right side again, good block touch. Coming to Franklin. Not going out to Hudson in transition. And they do this time and rips into the cross court. What a dig by Guchtiken. Hudson again. Dug by Schumacher. What a point by Wisconsin and Purdue, quite frankly. Number 30 in white for Wisconsin. The Libero is just a freshman, but she is fearless. Came up with three gigantic digs in that particular rally to help Wisconsin score that point. Lola Schumacher, five foot five freshman out of Carmel, Indiana, 3.7 digs per set. Big lead again for Wisconsin. They really seem to be avoiding setting Hudson. Why would that be their game plan? Purdue wants to get other hitters involved, so you can't go Eva Hudson every time. They're trying to mix it up to keep Wisconsin's block off balance. Yeah, but Wisconsin's block is right in their face, as evidenced by their totals. 13 scoring blocks tough for Hudson and the rest of the attackers for Purdue. I'd like to see Wisconsin, excuse me, Purdue attack a little bit more out of the middle. We saw them have success on the back one, maybe some gap sets, move that Wisconsin block a little bit more, but still attack out of the middle. Once again, Wisconsin at 8-1, 14-4 overall healthy and really, really looking strong here as we approach the midway point of the season. Watch freshman Lola Schumacher go to work for Wisconsin. Tough serve. She's covering her hitters. This rally is extended. Both teams trying to transition it. There's one dig. And that was the one by Gooch again. How about this one down the line? That's two. It's not over yet. Another one overhand dig, and then Sarah Franklin chops it super sharp for the Wisconsin point. Boy, it is tough to score against either of these teams, but when you add the blocking prowess in front of Schumacher for Wisconsin. Next match for the Wisconsin Badgers against none other than Nebraska at home. That's on November 1st. Big lead here for Wisconsin. Remember, they're up two sets to nine. Into the middle once again, and an unforced error. That ball way too low for Lourdes Myers, and Wisconsin running away with this. You see Purdue trying to get 
the middle involved, and that was a gap set. Make that Wisconsin block move. New setter in the match, Ali Shondell. She's a freshman, five foot ten, from Lafayette. There you see number two Nebraska at Illinois, Iowa, then Penn State, USC, and then UCLA in LA. Hudson is blocked. A dominating performance by the Wisconsin Badgers. I'm really impressed by the way Wisconsin is dialed in. And, and when you talk about the block often, but their backcourt defense has been oh, really yeah. disciplined as well. And we're seeing all out effort on the floor. 46 digs for Wisconsin, 45 for Purdue. Still going away from Hudson. That ball is touched in the backcourt. So Purdue will register the kill point possession. Hudson now with 16 kills on 47 swings. Back to the line. Ali Shondell coming in a match cold and running in the middle. That's impressive. Julia Kane will come in to serve for the match. Purdue is hitting 105. Wisconsin is up to 187. Really nice transition set way out of system. On the slide, Booth, big swing. Coming out to Franklin, ball set tight. Stabbed by Shondell. Another long rally. Here's Franklin. Good block. with a big block. Charlie Furbringer had two really nice bump sets and then you see Lourdes Myers in the middle of the court for Purdue, big block. Seventh block for Purdue right now against 14 for Wisconsin. Lowest hitting percentage of the year so far for Lourdes Myers Purdue at 104. Here's Furbringer, set the tone from the service line in the opening set, overpass. Franklin, <laughs> what a rip by Sarah Franklin, 13 in red for Wisconsin. But it starts with a tough serve and you get that first contact over the net and Wisconsin with all their offensive weapons running a free ball is tough to stop. Purdue running out of time, oh tough serve. Franklin again, ball set a little tight, good recycle. Restart the point. Wisconsin just completely dialed in on Chicoin defensively. Hudson out of the back row and dug by Schumacher, a rare miscue out of the back row by 30 in the Libero jersey. Eva Hudson attacked the space between Schumacher and Orgel. They were both there. Loving the defense by Purdue, and that's a C ball. Not just down the middle, a little bit closer to the right side of the court for Purdue. Schumacher, perfect pass. A little too low for Schmeck. Schmeck. Oh, nicely done to the six foot seven. See, instead of six foot nine, too low, so she went to six foot seven, boom. Quick set in the gap, Carter Booth in transition. When they're running their middles, that just so much stress on the block for Purdue. Pretty good set out of position, but a better block. Sprick along with Carter Booth, block number 15. I feel like when Sprick and Booth are up there, set everything either in the middle or on the right side of the court. Let's just avoid her. Sometimes you can't. Wisconsin, third in the conference in total blo or blocks per set behind narrowly, narrowly. Here's Smreck again. Narrowly behind USC and Southern California. But after, after this week, Smreck and the rest of the uh, Badgers are going to be number one in the league and among the top four or five in the country. Match point now for Wisconsin. Tremendous, tremendous team, team performance. On an afternoon with Sarah Franklin was kind of quiet, although she smoothed things out. And that ball's out of bounds. A solid, solid road win 
for Wisconsin and Kelly Sheffield. Three sets to none over Purdue. 25-20, 25-23, 25-13. Incredibly impressive by the Badgers. Wisconsin, we talked about them trending up every direction. They're dialed in defensively, offensively, although in this match they only hit 180.